Ladies and gentlemen, if you would welcome back to the stage, Mr. Spike Milligan. This play is considered unsuitable for people. Mr. Greenslee prefers, of course, to the highly esteemed Gunja! Freak. 
If I get off this billiard table, I'll strike you down. Now you shut up, Baldy. What's all this Baldy stuff? I'm not Baldy. Well, madame is right. You are Baldy. <laughs> Hairless, the phantom head shaver had struck. The day after, I, Wallace Greenslade, opened a little tobacco kiosk. It was that week that Newton Dirt was taken to court by his wife. Uh, well, 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 silence in court, silence! The court will now stand for well, Judge Snorra. Mm -hmm. And if you'll stand for him, you'll stand for anything! <laughs> all right, all right, get seated and let the malarkey start. Malarkey, first case! Mrs. Dirt versus Mr. Dirt! Mrs. Brunella Dirt. Yes, mate. Raise your right hand and your left leg. <laughs> now, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Well, you ain't going to get far. <laughs> well, look, the witness for the persecution is ready. All right, let the prosecuting counsel start off his spiel. My lord, my client, Mrs. Brunella Dirt, claims that her husband, Nugent Dirt, did deceive her in that... During their courting days, right up to their marriage night, he did in fact conceal his boldness from her without her knowledge. She discovered this sad state when, at one o'clock in the morning of the honeymoon night, she was, my lord, my lord, please, do not excite yourself. Oh, the debate you already have. Oh. <laughs> At one o'clock in the morning, Madame Dirt arose to clean the windows. I object. What for you? On the window cleaner. <laughs> I do not wish to know that. The fact that she was cleaning the windows is unimportant. My bread and butter. What about your bread and butter? I'll clean the windows with it. <laughs> Silence in court. My lord, as counsel for the defence, I think we are straying from the facts. My client is accused of hiding a bald head. He denies this emphatically. He claims he was shaved in the night with a razor by person or persons unknown. <laughs> Silence in court. Silence in court. Silence. 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 Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, listen, I want some silence here. Silence in court. 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 trade in my little tobacco kiosk. One of my best clients was the defending counsel, QC Harry Seagull. <coughs> yes, I smoked heavily during the trial. It was one evening as I puffed on the alabaster mushroom pipe that events took a turn in the favour of Nugent Dirt. Oh, Parsons. Yes. For me? Yes. Any message? No. You positive? Yes. Thank you. No. <laughs> now, I wonder what this can be. Good heavens, is it? Yes, it is. It's hair. Human hair. And a note. Newton Dirt is innocent. This hair is his. It is I who bawled at him as he slept. Signed, the Phantom Head Shaver. <laughs> the case of Dirt versus Dirt. Third week. Now then, Newton Dirt, the jury of three just men and 29 criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Finds you guilty of hiding your bald duck from your wife until after you had married her. It's a lie. Silence! Silence. Thank you. Therefore, I sentence you to pay a pint fine of three shillings or do 60 years in the nick. I'll do the 60 years. I'm not throwing three bob down the drain. <laughs> Dirt for refusing to throw three bob down the drain. I sentence you to 60 years in the nick. Any last requests? Yes, I want to hear, that's my girl. Very well. <laughs> Call the Lance Ellington Cortex. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, until the day that she says yes, we print my fingers cross. Oh, that's my girl, and she's gonna stay mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
A memo of recommendation from Mr. Anthony Eden, the Foreign Secretary. A special pass signed by Mr. Clement Attlee, Leader of the Opposition. And last but not least, a permit to go wherever I please, signed by the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Sir Winston Spencer Churchill. When or <laughs> Open the door. I surrender. I surrender. Pat, I'm unarmed. You wouldn't hit a nursing mother, now would you? <laughs> Major Blotnock, take off that Anna Negro disguise. Oh, really? <laughs> My ABC Blue Bottle and I have followed a trail of fear to this post. We believe that the Phantom Head Shaver is in the immediate vicinity. Here? Oh, I tell you, sir. The Phantom wouldn't dare come near here, not with old Blotnock on duty. Why, I haven't slept for three nights, you know. I just sat here waiting for him. Oh, yes. Old Blotnock needs a smart man to outwit him. Oh, yes, yes. If the Phantom Head Shaver were to come here, I will... What are you staring at? Do you usually have half your head shaved? What? What? Oh, no, no. Heard me grunkers with a Greek club. Oh, nag me nuts. Oh, no. Something in his voice told me he knew what had happened. What's going on? Look at me nuts. I'm half bald, did you know? But, Major, this is really a blessing in disguise. You see, I must have interrupted him in his work. And we all know that the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. What? You mean you want me to wait here for him to come back and shave the other half? It's your duty. I refuse. Then, under Chinese law, I subpoena you. You filthy swine, you. <laughs> oh, very well. I'll do it. Just leave me that book about Scottish regiments. But it's called the Decameron. Of course. It's all about Decameron Highlanders. Oh, it is. <laughs> right. We'll leave you at... Capitaine. Capitaine, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. I can hear someone in the ammunition hut. It sounds like a man shot in a dirty big razor. That's him! Quick, follow me! Listen, he's in this hut with a naked razor. <laughs> come out, Phantom Head Shaver! You're surrounded, you hear? We're all heavily harmed. If you don't come, we'll come to that door. And so help me, we'll knock. <laughs> yo, that's tell him, yo. If, uh, if you don't come out, we'll come and we'll not go. Shut up, Echo! Shut up, Echo! Shut up, Echo! We're not Echo. afraid of you, Phantom Nutboulder. <laughs> we had no fear. Come out and face me. Come out and show your face. Looks out behind tree to see if face is shown. Blue bottle! Go in and get him! Yes, I will go in and. Oh. <laughs> Me? You want me to go and get him, Cubby Tank? Yes. Oh. Little me? Go and get him? Yes. What? Little tiny run weak frightened blue bottle going and get him? Yes. I don't know this game. <laughs> Let's play another game. Let's play doctors and nurses. Come down from that tree. I'll be Nurse Florence Nightingale, the lady with a lamp. Come out of that dustbin, you can be the doctor. Come out from behind that rock. The phantom won't harm you. Not when he sees that you're armed with a Jet Morgan cardboard cutout space catapult. All right, Captain, I will go in. I shall conquer him in mortal combat. Quickly makes out last will and testament on the back of fake packet. <laughs> I'm going for England. Farewell. No. <laughs> Let's play doctors and nurses. Oh, hey, he's frightened. Why don't you send somebody else? You then. Nope, try again. <laughs> Blue bottle, get into that hut and search it from end to end. Okay. Oh, not a soul was in there. We must have been hearing things. What a relief to hear things, isn't it? Hmm? Can I go home now? I say, Captain, what are you staring at me for? Look in this mirror! No, no, you rotten swine! I've been balded! You've ruined my Tony Curtis type haircut! I told you I didn't like this rotten game! Shh, quiet, quiet! He's still in there! Oh. I'll fix him! Oh. Throw this stick of dynamite in through the door! Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> It was a dub. Now, let's go in. Oh, come on. Keep me covered with your finger. What's going on? Good heavens. The, uh, hut 
blew up. No, poor fellows. They were looking for the head shaver, you know. Yes, I know. Yes, I, I suppose he was blown up as well. Care for a pipe of tobacco? Well. What? Oh, well, that's very really nice of you. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Charming fellow. <laughs> tobacco, eh? Mm, yes, lovely. Yeah, it's almost the same colour as my hair. <laughs> it is the same colour. Stop that man, that naughty, 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 naughty man. Stop him. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>
thank you, thank you for that wonderful applause. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed doing it. Uh, this is the last show of uh, the, our tour this year. We've visited something like 38 theatres. We've done, I can't, lost count of performances. Many. Many. <laughs> um, it's been an absolute delight. We've, we've welcomed hardened Goon Show fans from the age of 96 in one town we visited in Western Superman who came up and said he used to listen to Dr. Hanoi when he was in the Navy to a nine-year-old boy who came to see us on our very first show in Salisbury, who then became a, a great Goon Show fan, and that's great. Because one of the reasons we wanted to do this and bring this out is because it would have been Spike Milligan's 100th year this year, this centenary year. We were very, very privileged to be allowed to do this and overjoyed that we brought the Goon Show not only to fans who've been listening to it since it first started and are now listening to it on Radio 4 Extra, but to people who've never heard it before, and have now decided that's something they'd like to listen to. 